Hi everyone, this is Chris from Abar Above, and today we're going to take a look at some um, pointers, some tips, some advice for that first cocktail menu, so stay tuned. Now, if you guys are anything like me, um, it took me a little while for me to get comfortable in the role of a bartender, understanding the job, how to work behind the bar, you know, and just to see if I liked it or not. It took me about a year and a half to get to that point. But once I did, I realized that, you know, I was probably gonna be in this occupation for quite a long time. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed all the personal aspect of it. Um, and my mind started to shift from, I wanna be a bartender to, I wanna control a cocktail menu. So from that point on, I started really focusing on creating cocktails um, and really putting a lot of time and energy into cocktail design. Um, so it wasn't only, it was only a couple of months af after that of you know experimenting and creating solid cocktails that I landed my first cocktail menu. And to my surprise, it wasn't about designing cocktails at that point. Um, you know, once you land that first cocktail menu, your mentality has to shift and your skill set has to adapt a little bit more than just being able to make a really great drink. You know, there's a whole business perspective that happens that you need to know um, and there's a lot of logistics to controlling your own cocktail menu. So what I'm gonna do is just give you some insight on some things that you can expect on your first cocktail menu, some of the hurdles that you might face, and just kind of my own personal story on it. So, so when I first started attending bar, martinis were all the craze. And I'm not talking about those classic martinis that are spirit driven, served up in a martini glass. I'm talking about vodka sugar bombs of every sort that you can ever imagine, served up in a giant nine, 12 ounce martini glass. That was kind of what I started in. Um, Thank goodness things have changed. Uh, the classic cocktail revival has really started to educate people and you know, even bartenders like um, myself, I would definitely include myself in that. And you see a lot of diversity of glassware in the, the modern bar program. So the first tip is to diversify your glassware. Have something on your cocktail menu that is on the rocks, in a bucket, in a Collins glass, in a martini glass, in a coupe. And if you notice that on a Friday night, you know, you're offering three different cocktails in a coupe glass and you're running short every single Friday, now, first of all, you, you might want to order more glassware, but also you might want to take one of those coupe cocktails off and replace it with something else that isn't quite so heavily loaded, so maybe in a Collins glass, um, you know, and just alleviate some of the pressure on that one glassware. Um, the other thing is that um, you want to offer a different variety of base alcohols in your cocktail menu as well. So have something on there that's vodka-based, uh, gin-based, uh, tequila-based. You kind of get my picture. Um, you know, have a lot of different variety on there and also offer a bunch of different styles of cocktails as well. So typically when I create a vodka cocktail, I make that for the mainstream consumption. So something a lot easier to drink. It might be a little bit more on the fruity side. It might have something in there like champagne or something like that. So um, that I know I'm going to sell a lot of because it's an easy, you know, it's an easy sell. Vodka cocktails can be very, very appealing to the mass market. Uh, with gin cocktails, you can be a little bit more adventurous. Um, same thing with tequila, with bourbon, I try to go a little bit more classic with those. So you try to match um, the customer with the base spirit and that particular style. And you can come up with your own system, but that's kind of what's worked for me in the past. Um, the other thing is that you want to offer a different variety of beers on your tap too. So, you know, have something that's light, have something that's a little bit hoppy. Um, you know, try and cover as many different styles of beer that you can on your tap system. And if you're running a bottle program, a beer bottle program, that's a way that you can get a little bit more kind of crazy with some of the beers that you offer. And you're not going to be sitting on, you know, a keg for a month. Um, so, you know, you can have a lot of fun with the bottle beer program. And if you're noticing that something sells really well in the bottles, then maybe it's time to put it on the tap and see how it does on the tap. So, um, you know, you can offer a bunch of different styles and have some fun with that as well. Now, now, the first thing that I was not prepared for when I run my first bar program was that I didn't understand the business of the bar. I knew how to make a great drink. I knew how to make people happy, my customers at the bar, but I didn't understand the business of running a bar. Now, luckily, I worked for somebody that I had a lot of respect for and I've known in the past and we had a great relationship. So he took a lot of time and energy to educate me on the business of restaurants and bars. So, you know, he provided me with a great education, but you're going to have to learn some basic things. So the first thing that you're going to have to learn is how to cost out a cocktail, 
we did a video on that earlier, and I'll put a link to it in the, in the show notes here or in the video. But you want to be able to understand how much money goes in your glass and how much you're selling it for. So, for example, if you're running a $3, um, you know, if you create a cocktail that has $3 worth of material cost, alcohol, mixer, juices, whatever it is that goes in the glass, and you sell it for $6, you're running what is called a 50% cost of goods. So that's really, really bad. It's very high. Most of the bar programs that I've worked with in the past, your bar program in general, all the alcohol that you sell, runs at a 20% cost of goods. So for every $2 worth of product, it sells for $10. And that's a pretty fair amount. I'm not sure how, you know, kind of different states, different cities, different regions, they all are different. But, um, you know, in the bar programs that I've run, that's about what we run at. Now, the other thing is that you should know how to do an inventory. So when you do an inventory, you typically count all the bottles of alcohol, all the sodas, all the mixers, everything that you order, you count. Um, and the way it works is, let's say this bottle of Russian Standard um, is 20 bucks a bottle. Let's just throw that out there. You want to know how much value is still left in this bottle. So what we usually do is we count it by tenths of a bottle. So let's say this is 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5. This bottle is actually about 0.4. There's about that much left in here. So that's what I would put on my inventory sheet. And then I would just multiply the bottle cost by 0.4. And that will give me how much investment or how much material is still left in this bottle. Um, so that's essentially how you run an inventory. Now, once again, like I said, your bar program as a total should run at about 0.2. You know, you'll figure it out, whatever runs for your bar program in your state region. Owners can be different as well. But know what that number is and know what that target number is. Um, because most likely your bonus is going to depend on you being able to hit that number. Now your wine program is going to run differently. Your um, beer program is going to run at a different percentage. And your labor cost is going to run it, and food costs are going to run at different percentages. But know what those percentages are because, like I said, at the end of the day, that's where your target bonuses are. And if you don't hit those numbers, you're kind of leaving money on the table. Um, so, yeah, that's, um, that's how to do material cost uh, for cost of goods, bar program inventory numbers. Um, you know, so that's, that's one thing. Now, there's a lot more to learn about the bar business, um, but there is one piece of advice that I'll give to everybody, and that is if you have any intention on running a bar program, start to learn to love Excel um, now because it is such a powerful tool for the restaurant business that you really, really should learn how to be comfortable with it and how to really work in that environment. And a lot of the, a lot of the cocktail designers or you know, bar managers that I've known in the past are absolutely maniacal about their spreadsheets. They are so impressive. You know, they're like 10 pages long, and you know, each one kind of does a self-populating thing. It's, it's pretty intense. You can go really, really crazy on it, but it will really, really help you out with your bar program. Um, so learn to love Excel now. So we'll have some more uh, tips for you in the future. This covers quite a bit, actually, um, getting that first bar program and understanding kind of the hurdles that you're going to face once you first get your bar program. But um, we'll have some more tips in the future. But until then, I hope you guys have a great shift, and cheers. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, find us on Google+, or visit us at abarabove.com.